be useful. We saw Philip use Size the Toad very nicely in top eight against Nico. And of course, there we see Nico Alabas, who, I mean, he's Volcanian Turtonator. This is a deck which I picked before the tournament, the deck which I thought was going to come to victory, but of course, Fabian's got a really good deck here. He's got the Ability Lock, he's got Trash Lanch, and we are off, and it looks a bit like the previous game, with Turtonator and Volcanian facing off against each other. And straight away, we see a Hypnotoxic Laser, we get the Poison, but we don't get sleep. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it, Turtonator. This is not another mirror match. Turtonator is just splashed into Fabian's deck. He called it Garboder uh, Stuff Deck. <laughs> if he wins, maybe you can name his deck because you haven't seen something like this on stream before. We could see a very, very quick win here. If Nico is able to get two fire energy in the discard and one in the hand and then play a blacksmith, he wins. If he gets an energy on Volcanian, plays a blacksmith to get two more energy onto Volcanian, Volcanic Heat is actually hitting Turtonator for weakness and we'll do 260 damage on the first turn of the game we could be seeing a good old-fashioned turn one win which is supposed to be gone from this format now we see the steam up it's irrelevant but it gets the energy in the discard and he's got a shaman in hand if he gets he's got the blacksmith he is one energy away from winning the game and i know he's got a shaman in hand is this happening this might happen here comes a shaman does he get the energy oh let us see your hand has I, he missed it? I think he must have done. He hasn't played it yet. Oh, that's got to be heartbreaking for Nico. Oh, my goodness. Fabian must have been holding his breath. I mean... Unbelievable. Oh, he, he plays like 170 fire energy or so. He missed it. That was crazy. I can't believe he missed them. He's playing 17 basic fire energy. <laughs> Fabian can't believe his luck that he's still in this. <laughs> Look at his face. He's playing a chorus for free, which is more than suboptimal, but he's trying to hang on somehow. Is it more than suboptimal or less than suboptimal? It is suboptimal. Let's agree <laughs> on that. I don't know. You, you, <laughs> you're the native speaker here. <laughs> oh, let's not argue about language, sir. <laughs> now, the chorus here is only getting three cards, but would you believe it? He gets a seismitone and a shaman for five cards. This is, this is going well, I would say. <laughs> that is about the best three card chorus I have ever seen. Yeah, that was amazing. Nico is so crushed. I mean, he was, he was so short going up. 1-0 in, oh in this match, in the final match, and now all of a sudden Fabian is building up his setup. It's looking really, really good for him now, and he's uh, probably going to go for Shell Trap this turn. He went for Shell Trap, actually. There we it, go. And now Nico can attach an energy and attack, but of course, if he does, he gets KO'd back by the Shell Trap damage. Now, we can see Nico's actually got three basic energy prize, but even so, he had 14 in his deck. Oh, never mind. Right, we're going to have to stop talking about that sooner or later. So we do see the end coming down here from Nico, And now this is a fairly awkward position. He can easily get the KO if he draws an energy, but then he gets KO'd back. He's played an end, so there's no blacksmith <coughs> coming out. He will lose all of his energy. And then Fabian can just start doing that thing that Fabian wants to do, and just <laughs> using Quaking Punch. Yeah, these situations in turn number one, when you have a window of opportunity to close it right there, and you're going after it, sometimes comes back to bite you. Because if you don't get there, you got in a, a more difficult situation than you were in because you haven't decided to go for the usual setup, like, for example, the turn one Kiawe. Now Nico has to find a way to get back into this game. He does. And I don't, I mean, it's such a difficult decision. I'm trying to decide if I'm Nico here, am I using volcanic heat? On the one hand, you take out a Pokemon and you take two prizes and you get rid of their energy in their fighting fury bout. But on the other hand, you give up two prizes and you pass it to your opponent's turn. So it's a big decision here for Nico. And I, I really don't know what the right decision is. Had he been able to take the KO while using a blacksmith, that would have been great because he would have had the energy on the field. But it looks like, I mean, he could just retreat here using those free energy. But that is a lot of wasted energy for no real gain. So it looks like he might just go for the KO here and kind of cross his fingers a little bit. They recovered a blacksmith there with a versus curve because he knows the quaking punch is coming. He goes for the trade there and Fabian promotes his rubbish. And I like this because he's got the Tapu Lele which can take a hit from anything on Fabian's side of the field and he's already got the float stone so he can do that retreating action 
and the versus seeker before the quaking punch was brilliant but we do see an end down to four here and this really is what fabian wants to do put his opponent at a fairly low hand size get the ability lock going and then just start using quaking punch he's not doing much damage but he's basically locking his opponent out of abilities and items. And to be honest here, if I'm Nico, I am desperate to see a Kiawe in my hand. Yeah, I'm really happy to see Fabian playing an end every once in a while because he's playing so fast. It's really tough to keep track of here. There's a Tails on the Hypnotoxic Laser. What else does he, ha does he have? It's going to just be a Quaking Punch. 60, including the poison damage. And, I mean, that Tapu Lele really needs to retreat here. Otherwise, this is, I mean, it, it's going to add up very, very quickly. With a choice band, it is, to all intents and purposes, a two-hit KO. So a small break there from Nico that there was no choice band on that size metode. Otherwise, he'd be on 90 here. But either way, this is going to add up very quickly. We just see a Professor Sycamore here. So now Nico will be able to retreat the Tapu Lele next turn without seeing it KO'd in between but he's then presumably going to have 150 damage on 170 HP Tapu Lele which would then open the door for Fabian to even just use a Tapu Coco to take the KO so I think he had to retreat there as annoying as that was. Yeah, Nico promotes a Shaman EX. He doesn't like it but what else can he do at this point? He still doesn't find himself a Kiawe so he's trying to hang on here with just one fire energy attached to the hole. And that Kiawe miss was so big there. You saw he ended his turn without attacking. There was nothing he wanted to do. He just wants energy. Kiawe would have been beautiful. And we saw in the second game when Nico was playing Philip, if you get the Turtonator out in the mid game against a Seismitoad and use Nitro Tank GX, that hurts. And one energy now to the active Shaman. It is. Uh, he could retreat it, but at the same t uh, time, he doesn't really. Likes it, like it, but it, still, he doesn't have a Kiawe. He just passes it over. Really a lost turn for Nico here. It really is. We do see the computer search coming down here from, um, from Fabian. What's he going for? I mean, to be honest, a Hypnotosic Laser would be quite good here. Or he could go for a Guzma. Um, it looks like he's actually gone Fighting Fury Bout, which I cannot disagree with. Because, of course, Fighting Fury Bout puts him out of range for Ho-Oh. It would take two Steam Ups and, oh yeah... He's ability locked. He can just use a field blower to turn off the ability lock. Oh, no, wait, he can't because he's also item locked. This guarantees that Seismitoad will be able to take a hit from Ho-Oh. And all we see there is just a sky return, but there's no double colorless that Nico plays. Yeah, the sky return here is interesting because uh, if Nico can uh, attach fire energy after fire energy, and as long as Fabian is not finding himself a hypnotoxic laser, he could always sky return. It's like a two-turn... <laughs> loop of sky return but it would buy him some time that's exactly what he's trying to do now it's a really awkward sky return loop when you're not playing double colorless energy but it is absolutely an option at the moment the problem is he just he needs energy and a couple of turns ago we're thinking right well it's fine he's going to key our way onto the ho -Oh, and we've seen this throughout the weekend ho -Oh beats seismitoad if you can get the four energy on and if there's no Fighting Fury Bout on the Seismitoad. As it stands at the moment, I mean, the one card Nico wants more than any other right now, other than Kiawe, I suppose, is Field Blower. Field Blower would be huge, but he's item locked. Yeah, at some point, if Nico can find in between those two Sky Return loop turns, if he can find a Kiawe, that would be huge. He can now attach another Fire Energy to the active Shaman. If he now had that Kiawe, that would be huge because next turn he could attach, manual attach to the Shaman again, another Sky Return, save it from being knocked out, and uh, keep on attacking this way. So the Seismitoad would actually be worn down a bit by bit here. And, of course, if he can get two Sky Returns off, that would then bring Seismitoad down to... Well, 120, 160 with the Fighting Fury belt. And then that would be enough to get the KO with Ho-Oh. So, another energy, and then a Sky Return, and then a Kiawe, and then an attack. <laughs> that would be great. So, really, this is the turn for Kiawe. You want to get the Kiawe on a turn you're not using Sky Return. It's not a Kiawe, but it's not a million miles away. I like this from Nico. It's something. One more Sky Return. Then he can potentially use... Oh, he's going for it right now, actually, which is not bad at all. Um, I think he does need to discard that fire energy, though, because it doesn't have free retreat right now, that Shaman. 
and then he should, in theory, be able to attach an energy next turn and get the KO. Yeah, so that fire energy needs to go, I think, from uh, Shaman unless we missed something there. I'm not too sure about it. But at the same time, Fabian is using the Versus Seeker here. He is uh, recovering his Acer Roller and picking up the Garboder. So that means for now the uh, Pokemon abilities are back on. Uh, thankfully, uh, because Ross mentioned it, the fire energy is now indeed off. And the Garboder is back on. Oh, we got a great team here today, ladies and gentlemen. Little things like that happen. It's the final. You're nervous. But we're here to make sure these little mistakes get fixed, along with our wonderful backstage crew. Now, we actually saw there, it looked like an ace roller coming out to pick up the Garboder and then kind of put it down again after using a shame. It, it, it's a little bit awkward, to be perfectly honest. It looked like he was playing an ace roller there. I quite would have liked to see the ace roller coming down on the seismatode to heal it up. As it stands at the moment, I don't know where Nico's going with this because I'm just thinking he, he's still... Phoenix Burn doesn't KO. We found out in the last game, 210 will not <laughs> KO a Fighting Fury Belted seismatode. Fair point, yeah. So he's just using Sacred Fire here. Now, next turn, Next turn, Phoenix Burn will get the KO. So, I think we really, and yes, I wanted to say this a couple turns ago, I never got chance. Save the lasers for ho -Oh. You don't really care about Shaman, he's going to Sky Return. But you really want to use lasers to try and take down ho -Oh. If you can put the ho -Oh to sleep, it can't use Phoenix Burn. Unfortunately, Fabian is having no luck with his laser flips today. Yeah, he doesn't no heads on this one, so ho -Oh is free to use its Phoenix Burn right now and will take the knockout on the Seismitone, will bring Nico down to two prize cards. But at the same time, afterwards, what else is he going to have on his board? Luckily for him, the Verbank City Gym is not out there, so he can use Scorched Earth. He also brings another Volcanion EX in play, but I'm not sure what else he has uh, in hand. I think he just announced for the attack. He needs a Blacksmith and the Guzma in that order. He can Blacksmith onto either the Turtonator or the Volcanian, then manually attach an energy, and then Guzma that Shaman on Fabian's bench to go and get the KO. And I think that's, that's really the win here, because I believe if we already... No, we don't have a Fighting Fury bout on the Seismitoad. What Nico... What Fab, sorry, what Nico could do here, and this is a very awkward play, if his Ho-Oh would last long enough, he could kind of just chill in the active for a turn, use Sacred Fire, and then use Phoenix Burn for the KO. That's asking quite a lot, to be perfectly honest. I think really here he wants a Blacksmith and he wants a Guzma. But remember that for as long as Fabian's using Seismitoad, and we know Quaking Punch is coming out this turn, we've got the Floatstone on the active, the Seismitoad ready to go. There's no Versus Seeker. So... It's all well and good me sitting here behind the desk going, ah, well, he just needs these two supporters. But he needs to draw them without Versus Seeker. Yeah, Fabian is content to uh, just keep on quaking punching together with the uh, poison damage. That's 40 more damage, so 140 damage right now on the ho -Oh. So Nick, uh, Nico, if he can retreat somehow or play a Guzma combination, he would be able to get another attack in. And he needs to retreat here because the maths works out perfectly for Fabian. One damage count, one poison will be taken from ho -Oh. Then Fabian will hit for 30. Then the poison comes in and knocks out the ho -Oh. So he couldn't retreat it next turn. Nico had to retreat it this turn. And Blacksmith? Blacksmith here would be wonderful. But you know that Fabian really is going to want a Guzma of his own next turn. If he can find one. Yeah, there we go. Just a pass, unfortunately. Burbank City is down. Professor Juniper, there is another Fighting Fury belt on the active Seismitoad and another Quaking Punch. The players are really quick here. They are going for it. I like this. A nice brisk pace of play. Um, again, Blacksmith, Guzma. That is what Nico's really looking for here. Here's the Blacksmith. Does... Um, He's actually choosing to go to the non-EX Volcanian, which is an interesting play. But what he can, of course, do here is he can Power Heater. And I love this because that's got a retreat cost of two. So he can now manually retreat it. And now he can build up multiple attackers for that Guzma play coming up in the future. So this is a really nice play from Nico. I love that he went non-GX Volcanian, non-EX Volcanian, Blacksmith. He can retreat. And to be honest, because Seismato's damage is quite low here, 
then he's got one more turn of power heater, and there's no other non-GXs on the field, so Fabian doesn't get any closer to winning by knocking out this Volcanian. Yeah, Fabian is just content to Quaking Punch. He doesn't do anything at all, just a Quaking Punch here. So this is the most important thing for him right now, limit Nico to not play any item cards whatsoever. Volcanian now has 80 damage. There's another Scorched Earth, so Verbank City Gym goes down again. And now let's see what Nico is deciding to go with as his next attack. Because Fabian's getting the KO next turn, right? That's fine. But he's only has three prizes left, so he still has to KO two two prize Pokemon to win the game. Oh. Nico here, he's basically trading a blacksmith to get two turns of attachments. He's basically used a blacksmith onto the non X Volcanian to get four energy onto the bench. And now Guzma wins the game. He's got the Ho-Oh and the Turtonator ready to go. This is huge for Nico, but he doesn't have items. So he can't use Versus Seeker. He doesn't have abilities, so he can't use Steam Up. He's got to actually have the Guzma here. Or maybe even just go Shell Trap. Yeah, and I think Fabian can't wait now. I think he's uh, trying to attach as many cards as he can right now. There's even a Trash Lens Garbodor, and I wouldn't be surprised if he would decide to go with the end just to limit Nico's resources in hand. I'm not quite sure how many cards Nico has in hand, but at this point I think Fabian has to go with the end here. I think the end here has got to be the part. Oh, mind. I like the Ace Roller <laughs> play. And I was going to say, we need to know how many items are in the discard. Maybe Garboda could be a good attacker here. But I think, Fa oh no, I think Fabian is just choosing to give up the game. Did Nico show, a v uh, did Nico show the Guzma there? I think he flashed the Guzma there, if I saw correctly, in his hand. So the, the end would have been potentially the, the better play. But, well, it's easy for us to say here. I know. And again, I mean, one thing I always make a point of when we're commentating, we can see flashes of their hand, but we can't sit and look through their discard piles. And we can't always get a good look at their hand. So when we're commentating, the players are working on more information than we are. But I think it's a very good game there from Nico. And I love what Fabian did because... Nico is just doing big KO, big KO, big KO, big KO. The way Fabian slows that down is using Seismitoad. And we saw how well he did that. But then Nico, he's got Kiawe. He's got Blacksmith. He's got Power Heater. The one way you stop Volcanian winning is to try and limit the energy they have on the field. But Volcanian decks know this, so they've just got so many tricks to get energy on the field. Yeah, if you remember this game correctly, I think Nico had so many slow turns when Quaking Punch wasn't even on. So Nico was very unlucky with the cards that he drew in the beginning of the game, but somehow, with all the damage spread on his field, he still managed to hang on and get the win here with probably the Guzma. We didn't see it, but this is what I would suspect. Yeah, either that or it may be that... Um, you know, it, it could just be that Fabian thought, you know what, this game's going on too long. I am just never going to win it. I want to go to game two and try my luck there. Now, we don't see terrible prizes from... Oh, actually, oh, no, well. I'm lying to you. Fabian's got two double colorless energy prize, which I believe was the case in his game against Mark that we streamed. Yeah, that's pretty bad for him. Those double colorless energy won't be in his hand for uh, quite some time because they are not at the bottom of the prize cam. You can't see this right now on screen, but they, they are two double colorless and he needs those for his seismitoad. A seismitoad becomes a lot less effective when you can't find the double colorless energy to use for the quaking punch. So that might be a little bit of an issue. The good news for him here is he has access to an Ultra Ball in the first turn, so he should be able to process this data right now. He should know by now that there are only two double colors energy in his deck. And he's got two turns to find it. He didn't get one there, but he's got next turn. He, the double colors doesn't really do anything for him this turn anyway. He got the Hypnotoxic Laser. He got the Verbank City Gym. He got the heads on the Hypnotoxic Laser. So this is not a bad turn from Fabian at all. He's getting going. And you know he's a little bit worried because just like in the last game, energy Blacksmith will get Nico two prizes on the first turn of the game. So this is big for Fabian. He was able to get, you know, multiple Pokemon out and that Simon Toad. And it's ahead, so he does wake up. Is he going to be able to get the Bright Flame going? Or may he even just maybe try a Blacksmith so that he can Shell Trap in anticipation of that Seismitoad potentially coming out and using those Quaking Punch shenanigans. Yeah, many options here. You could go for a Kiawe, could go for a Blacksmith, could go for manual attachments for Steam Ups. Let's see what Nico is going for. He, of course, takes his time, first of all, to go through his deck. Also needs to know what kind of cards are priced. He will be happy to see that there are not too many important cards there. And he decides to go for a Shaman to dig for some more cards in round number one. 
And I like this. I mean, turn one blacksmith play for the Turtonator decks are so much fun. It's kind of mean to your opponent. But, you know, going ahead and using that Shaman to draw some cards. That, that blacksmith's not the be-all and end-all. Again, Kiawe onto a Ho-Oh is still a really good play. But we see a steam up there from Nico. And again, may, this is kind of irrelevant here because he's already got the KO on a Shaman. But he wanted the energy. Here's the blacksmith. And we might see a shell trap here unless he's got another energy. Now he needs another energy again with the Shaman. He missed it in the turn one. I think he has it. If he wants it, he has it. And there is a question here. Does he want to shell trap with that? Oh, no, to be honest, it doesn't know. He doesn't really want the shell trap here. Because, of course, when Seismitoad comes in, if he's got a double colorless, 60 damage will be on because of the laser. And then uh, Quaking Punch will do 80 to put him up to 140. So there's so much damage on there. I like the idea here for Nico of just using Bright Flame, get the KO. He won't be KO'd, I don't think. But even so... I think just taking the KO, taking those two prizes, because we saw in the previous game when he had a couple turns where he was just kind of being quaking, punched and chilling, he was able to build his board state. And that's what really led him to victory in the previous game. In this case, he goes for a Tapu Lele and getting a Professor Sycamore. He goes with the Fire Energy, so he does have it. He can take the knockout on the Shaman, and he does and picks up the early two price cuts here. I really like this play from Nico. He's got time to use stuff like Kiawe. And, oh, we see a head here. Now, this could be quite big, of course, because as it stands, I don't think this is being KO'd this turn. Quaking Punch will do 80, putting up to 140, plus the laser would put up to 170, which is not enough to get a KO. It would KO going back into Fabian's turn. But, of course, we could see here something like a Blacksmith and then Bright Flame for 160, and that Seismitoe will be under a lot of pressure. And he did hit the... Uh, he hit the computer search, which is huge because remember, two double colorless price. He needed that. He was under the, you know, he was under pressure to find that. Yeah, he knows he has to preserve those double colorless energy. Maybe also opting to uh, prioritize getting the AC roller if he needs it throughout the game. But this is not going to be a knockout. No, um, he has to wake up, and it's tails, which is really awkward for Nico because if he can't find a way to retreat it, it will be knocked out going into Fabian's turn, and this opens up another opportunity for Fabian to get more damage into a different. Pokemon. The only option he's got is Guzma. I love this play from Nico. Just give up on the Turtonator. It's really harsh. It's terrible. But there's nothing you can really do here. You've got to kind of give up the Turtonator. So you might as well get some energy on the board while you do so. Yeah, the question is, what is he going to promote here? Maybe again, Shaman, because we've seen this before. As long as there's no hype, no toxic laser, Shaman can sky return it off in two turns. But in this case, he goes with the Tapu Lele. Also, only one retreat cost. It's just making sure that he's got something that can take a hit. Quaking Punch, even with something like Hypnotoxic Laser, it takes a while to build up enough damage. Although there comes the Garboda, that's huge! Because it means that there is no possibility of the Ho-Oh taking a KO. And there's the Hypnotoxic Laser putting more pressure on the Tapu Lele, even again putting it to sleep. So another flip for Nico that is going to be very important. Fabienne is running away with this game. And I said previously that Fabian was not being able to get any heads on laser. There's one. He's making up for it, quite frankly. <laughs> and he got the psychic energy on Seismitoad, which means if he were to play something, you know, if that Seismitoad were to go down, he doesn't need a second. He doesn't need that, that double colorless. He can just use basic energy. I really like that from Fabian. It's a really nice heads up play. Yeah, it's really tough for Nico now, so the energy situation is not optimal. He only has two energy to the ho -Oh, so is he going to use the GX attack here? He could, I suppose. Oh, oh he's oh, got right. Blacksmith! Oh, this is cool. Um, it really doesn't matter which attack he uses here. They add up to 230 and get the KO. He can't use Phoenix Burn. Now, actually, no, it does matter. I'm lying to you. Because, yeah, there's the ace roller. Because then he could have used Sacred Fire to get the KO and then Phoenix Burns the following turn. So no, that did actually make quite a big difference. And here again, he gets the basic energy down, so next turn he can go double colorless. Oh, this hurts a lot. So Nico again in a very dif uh, difficult situation there. Of course, the, the poison is healed off. Tapu Lele is already on the bench. He plays a Professor Sycamore. He does not have access for I uh, to item cards as he didn't have it for many, many turns. So Nico's options are very 
very much limited. Again, he ha would have to move the Ho for it to be able to attack again. And it doesn't and look he like he only used Sacred Fire, so he's fucked. Um, no, he used Phoenix Burn, but he can still use Sacred Fire this turn. Phoenix Burn only stops you using Phoenix Burn the following turn, so he can use Sacred Fire. All right. So he's, he's all good on that front, but he is doing it in the wrong order, because you really want to Phoenix Burn, get the KO with Sacred Fire, and then be able to Phoenix Burn the new Pokemon that comes up. As it is, he's going to have to Phoenix... Oh, he's got another Ace Roller! Well. Oh, that's upsetting. But he can still just Sacred Fire next turn. <laughs> <laughs> and there's again the Fighting Fury belt, so Fabian doesn't like any damage on his board. And the double colorless energy, very well done by Fabian. He knows the double colorless energy is a rare good for him right now, and he cover recovers it immediately again with Acerola. Do you want to know something annoying? Please. He's got Versus Seeker in his hand! Oh, So yes. he can just Ace Roller again next turn! You won't believe what <laughs> happens next! <laughs> you won't believe what happens next! <laughs> so here we're going to see Sacred Fire for 50. Oh no, we are going to see the Phoenix Burn, because this is the correct order, like I've said a couple of times and keep forgetting myself. But he can just go Ace Roller. And the thing is, Ho-Oh can take quite a few... He can take quite a few quaking punches. The problem is, sooner or later, he will get KO'd. And if Fabian can use enough ace rollers... Oh, he's going Colrus here. Colrus, so no ace rollers. So you would never have believed what happened next. It is going to be a Colrus for the full 10, is it? Or no, it's a 9, I believe. And it's going to be very interesting because we had a similar situation like this in game number one. Nico was... Um, surely, uh, slowly but surely, able to climb back into this game and now maybe Fabien is not fast enough to put that damage onto Nico's board and Nico might be able able to, to pull this off somehow. So he gets the KO here. Yeah. And this is what's huge, because he can get the KO with Sacred Fire, which means next turn, Phoenix Burn is on the table. So if a new side... Oh, he's got a Fighting Fury about already. Fair enough. I was going to say, if he didn't have a Fighting Fury about that would be fine, but he does. Of course he does. Yeah, we haven't seen any Trasher Lands action from Fabian, so I would wonder how many item cards are in Nico's discard pile. I would believe there are not too many because of the item lock that is going on, but he might have discarded a couple with the Professor Sycamore that Nico has played. Yes, and of course, sooner or later in every game it starts to add up. Now, we're on 120. Ah, oh, so this will get the KO. Laser... Oh, with a Fighting Fury bout. Uh, we'll switch the dice so we'll so he's actually that. choosing to just pass here with Garboda in the active, it looks like. It will go up to 150 in this case for the Ho-Oh, plus 40 damage if he, has, if he attaches to the Fighting Fury belt. So that yeah. would just be enough to knock out the Ho-Oh. I was going to say, yeah. There we it, go. They, they, were, they were talking about dice and it looked like he was passing, which was very strange. So yeah, it's got to be the Fighting Fury bout here because the maths works out perfectly. The slight delay was there were three fours on there and they chose to switch it to two sixes to make it easier to see. Uh, but that, that's very confusing when you're watching because <laughs> when they start changing dice, you're like, oh, he's just passing the turn. He's not. <laughs> Very important, but there's also a Seismitor without a Fighting Fury belt. So next turn again, if Nico somehow manages to find a Guzma together with a Steam Up, this could be enough to take away this match in the final. Unfortunately, that Garboda is still out there with the Floatstone attached. There will be no Steam Ups, not in the near future. That's right. So, and one thing Fabian has done really nicely this game, he's managed to not put a Shaman down. Which sounds like a really weird thing to congratulate for some, somebody for. Congratulations, you didn't play Shaman. But it's a huge deal, because Guzma would win the game now. So, what we're going to see here is a Shell Trap, and then, presumably, we're going to try and see Shell Trap followed by a Bright Flame to take the win, but... Of course, Fabian, we know he's got options here. But if he does just if he just hits into Shell Trap, he will lose the game to an inevitable bright flame. Yeah, this is really interesting uh, to see what Nico is going for. There's the Shell Trap that you already announced and Fabian looks like he doesn't have too many options. There's the uh Gets us there, only one versus Seeker. There's a Kiawe in Nico's hand, he doesn't need it at this point in the game. So Fabian only allowed to draw him one more card. Nothing much he can do really. No, and the awkward thing is here that if Fabian uses Quaking Punch, it won't KO Turtonator, but there is absolutely no chance Nico does not get the return KO. But, so what, what does he hit here? I mean, what he really wants is maybe something like a Guzma to KO the Tapu Lele, or something like that, a Guzma, or a Pokemon Ranger, which I don't believe he actually plays, but of course, we just saw him play Getsis, so there will be no Guzma here. So, 
I'm really, st and he can't retreat unless he attaches a third energy. But then he's not got an attack. I think he's actually going to manually retreat the Seismitoad. Yeah, at the same time, he did not attach any energy, I believe, last turn. So the attachment should have gone onto the uh, Treasure Lands Garboda, which just evolved. So he could have gotten an attack in if he wanted to. But now this is really, really awkward because the Shell Trap is buying Nico some time here. And I, I like, you know, Fab Fabian didn't attack into it last turn. He didn't want to take those eight damage counters. But we're in the same situation here. I think what very may well happen is that the Seismitoad will manually retreat to the Garboda so that the Garboda can hit and then take... Yeah, and that's exactly what's going to happen. But then again, does he have a double colourless ready for next turn? He does, actually. He's got one in hand. And now... They're trading 80 damage. <laughs> but Turtonator is in range now. That's what's big here. Seismitoad is not in Bright Flame range. Bright Flame will only put him on 200. That's not enough. But Turtonator will be taking... How much will he be taking from a, um, from a Quaking Punch? He'll be taking 80, which isn't actually enough as Just it with happens. A, yeah, there, there would be like a Verbang City Gym and a Hypnotoxic Laser for Fabian to pick up the KO there. That so would exactly do it. So it would be 80 plus the ATM would be 160 plus the Verbang City Gym Hypnotoxic Laser would be 190. So he's got the maths worked out. If he played Choice Band, he would get the KO straight away here, but he doesn't, so that's kind of a, a you know, redundant point to make. <laughs> he has a Professor Sycamore in hand, so he, if there's no end coming from Nico, he might be able to dig for it if, if he wanted to. There is a Float Zone attached to the uh, Garboder, so in case it does not get knocked out, he could retreat, attach the double color this to the Seismito and go for it. We'll see if, if, he's going, uh, if he gets the chance to dig for it. That has got to be the play here from Fabian. That, that is how he KOs this Turtonator. And might I remind you, Fabian only has two prizes left. KOing the Turtonator wins the game straight off. So as long as he can find Double Colorless and Hypnotosic Laser and Verbank City Gym, that will give him the win. And what I love is that he's already, you know, he's preempted this. He's got the Floatstone on Garboda. So there's none of this can he retreat malarkey going on. He can definitely retreat here. And Kiawe, I believe, is what Nico is eyeing up right now. Yeah, there we go, Kiawe. Very late in the game. Nico chooses this moment to go for it. So he gets more energy into play, preparing that one final blow, potentially, to bring home this game and win the match. Free energy attached to the Volcanion on the bench. I like this. It's a one prize Pokemon. We saw him do a very similar thing in the previous game. He could maybe Power Heater, or he could just Steam Artillery for 100. Seismato does not one hit KO Volcanium. And when he two hit KOs it, he doesn't win the game because he's got two prizes remaining. So essentially, Nico's going here, you know what? I know that you can win the game with double colorless energy, Verbank City Gym, Hypnotosic Laser, if you haven't played them all, and he might have done. He's played quite a lot of stuff. So he's basically saying, look, I'm going to give you a turn. And then, it, then it's my turn. Then I'm coming forward and I know what I'm doing. Wait a minute. Wait Day a minute. Dene coming out. This is amazing. We finally get to see it. They Dene becoming active here. And it attacks with the, en with the energy shot. Amazing stuff here in the finals. 60 damage from a Dene. But what Nico could do here is he could actually just retreat the Turtonator here. And then just take the KO with Steam Artillery. That would be an option. There's nothing... Oh, he's actually... Oh, Guzma. I love this. This is cool. This is lovely. So he's choosing to use the Guzma here. So he doesn't have to discard the energy off Turtonator. And he takes a KO. But a Guzma will still win the game for Fabian here. Guzma will win him the game. But he... I mean, if he had it, you've got to think he would have played it by now. Yeah, he has a tap of Lele. But at the same time, abilities are off because of his own Garboder. So he can't play it. Oh, that's upsetting. He doesn't have a field blower. You can get rid of your own tools with field blower, but no, we're just going to see a quaking punch for 80. This opens the door, ladies and gentlemen, greatly. Uh, what is that? Oh, he's got a Karen in his hand, is that? Karen doesn't do anything at this, well, technically it does do something, but nothing that's particularly useful. <laughs> yeah, Nico doesn't, doesn't have access to Versus Seeker, so that's why Seismitoad is so powerful right now. So he's played his Guzma. I'm not sure. I think he's playing two Guzmas, but I think we have seen them both already in this game, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see. 
So what we're going to see here is quite simply, we're just going to see the Volcanian attacking. And it doesn't actually matter which attack he uses. Uh, sorry, 60 is a magic number, so that Turtonator can then use do 160, put him up to 220, which with the Fighting Fury belt is his effective number of hit points. So either attack will do here. And the thing is, Fabian can KO the Volcanian, but Nico doesn't care about that because it won't give him the two prizes he needs to win. And if Fabian leaves that Seismitoad in the active after it takes a hit, he is definitely winning, losing the game on Nico's next turn. Very important turn now for Fabian. Can he do something about this? It doesn't look like he doesn't have any trainer card available to him. Karen does not matter, as you said. I think that's it. Well, he could retreat into his undamaged Seismitoad, which would be able to take a hit. But I don't... But then what? Well, exactly. That's exactly my point, Julian. Because if he does that, Nico's going to go, all right, steam artillery for 100. Now you're in the exact same position. So Nico here will... Now, again, a Guzma double colorless will still win the game for Fabian. Oh, there's a Guzma! Nico wins a game. He wins a match, two games to zero. And Nico is our champion at the Bilbao Special Championships. That was pretty gosh darned exciting. Yeah, he gets the... <laughs>